Thank you for joining me today. Before we get started, I want to take a minute to tell you about a new app called Get Upside that we at the Rideshare Guy have been using to save up to 25 cents per gallon on gas. Pretty awesome. The app is completely free to use. All you have to do is upload your receipt after you buy gas and then cash gets added to your account. The cash adds up over time and you can deposit your funds straight to your PayPal account whenever you want. Some drivers are using GetUpside to save $50 per week just buying gas from their favorite gas stations. So now listen closely because this deal gets even better. I'm going to give you a short code that'll get you an additional $0.15 cents per gallon sign-up bonus. So you just download the GetUpside app from the App Store, open the app, and enter the promo code. It's WQ8JR. Now, another way you can get your $0.15 cent per gallon sign-up bonus is to visit the rideshareguy.com forward slash getupside app. That's G-E-T and then upside, U-P-S-I-D-E, and then app, A-P-P. Check it out. All right, let's start the show. Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody, and welcome to today's show. I am recording this on December 3rd, and it's uh, not raining, so that's great, especially if you're a driver. Well, actually, if you're a driver, sometimes the rain is good. Like at rush hour, the rain is really good because that really drives up surge and you can make a little bit of extra money. But in general, over my career, I have not enjoyed driving in the rain at all. Uh, You got to work so much harder to to stay focused. And people are stupid, so they drive just the same speed. They don't slow down. Um, You know, you can hit hit water at hydroplane. Sometimes it's really hard to see, especially if you're driving early in the morning, so it's dark or late at night, and it's dark and it's raining. And then you got pedestrians out there who are walking around in black clothes and (laughs) And it's like, man, it's like a, it's like a video game, and you, you're trying not to uh, not to get into an accident or hit anybody. But you know, it rains, so we got to deal with it. But today it's not raining, so hallelujah for that. All right, what I want to talk about today is Uber. Uber has been in the news, big time, big time in the news. So in case you have been. Uh, Sleeping under a rock, as they say, uh, you might have heard about these things a little bit, but I'm going to go into some detail because I wrote articles about all of these things uh, for the Rideshare Guy. So top of the news, uh, the article I wrote is uh, Uber finally lets drivers see where passengers are going. So this is a feature that they're rolling out in California. So for the last four years that I've been driving, I've been like, you know, doing all these workarounds, MacGyvering ways to figure out where the passenger is going before I have to pick them up. We call it screening rides, right? I'm, I'm somewhat famous for really making that public that we can screen rides and uh, not pick up a passenger who's going up to a destination we don't want to go to. Well, finally, Uber has taken the lead here. And they are letting, going to start letting drivers see where the passengers are going. So we heard about this. Uh, when we hear about things at the rideshare guy, it's called embargo. So they tell us like a day or two ahead of time. 
and they provide us with some information, some opportunity to talk to somebody at Uber, some screenshots, and uh, this is pretty big news. So this is uh, in California. Uh, when it was announced, it was only for about 30% of California drivers, and they say by the middle of January, all drivers in California will have this, the, this feature. So what they're going to give you as you get the ping, so it's really important you understand this is at the ping. You can decide if you want to take the ride or not. And they're going to give you how much money you're going to make for the ride. So in the example, it shows uh, $14 to $19. Uh, they're going to tell you the distance and the duration. So it's going to be 20 minutes and it's going to be nine miles, for example. And then they're going to tell you the pickup point and the drop-off spot. So you can see exactly on the map where you're gonna go. And you then can choose whether you wanna take the ride or not. So this is just great news. I'm so happy that this is finally happening. I wish it had happened four years ago, uh, now at the tail end of my driving career, but, uh, and I still don't have it on my app yet, but um, I trust that they will deliver by the middle of January to everybody in California. And this just makes it much easier for all of us to do our job, right? At the end of the day, you want a ride that's, you know, going in the direction you want to go. You know, you can use your destination filter, but this will actually show you exactly where you're going. Uh, you want to stay off a bridge because there's a lot of traffic. You know, you can do that. Um, you want a long trip versus a short trip, short trip versus a long trip for any reason you want. You just don't accept it, right? And uh, in uh, conjunction with this, uh, Uber is also saying that your acceptance rate doesn't impact your status with Uber Pro. So even if you turn down every single ride, uh, your Uber Pro status will stay the same. So they're giving you complete freedom without any danger of anything bad happening to you to accept the rides or uh, decline the rides. The last feature that they announce is something called favorite driver feature. And this, you know, is kind of cool. So if you're, if you're, um, you're a good driver and you drive somebody and they like you and they, they'll be happy to have you drive them again, they can click on a, uh, a click where it says favorite and that'll make you one of their favorite drivers. Now, the only, the only time this can benefit you is when that passenger schedules a ride. So let's say they're going to the airport at 6 in the morning, and they've, set, they've scheduled the ride. Well, the first drivers that will get notified are the favorite drivers on that, on that passenger's list. And if any of those favorite drivers claim that ride, they've got it. So they could go pick up that passenger, take them to the airport, for example, probably get a tip because they're a favorite uh, driver. And that might be a nice way for you to start your day, right? So, uh, and if no favorite drivers take it, then it would just go out to the general, you know, driving population and somebody would claim it. So that's how the favorite driver feature works. And uh, so all these things are supposed to come out for all of California drivers by the middle of January. And I don't see why this won't expand to the rest of the country. Now, a big question, which I raised in the article, was why is Uber doing this, right? And, and uh, Harry asked, uh, asked Uber, why are you doing this? And they said, uh, you know, flexibility. We want to give the drivers more flexibility. And we were like, well, that's cool, you know, to give us more flexibility. But there's really kind of an underlying reason why this is happening in California. And my belief is that this is happening in California because of AB5, Assembly Bill 5. So for all you drivers who were like anti-AB5, you know, fighting for your right not to get paid more, <laughs> um, this, this shows you some of the power of this new law, AB5. So Uber is trying to give you more flexibility, more control over your work schedule so that they can make more of an argument that drivers are independent contractors. That's why I think this is happening. It's 100% a result of AB5 in California. So it's a good thing for drivers that this AB5 passed. Um, it remains to be seen how Uber and Lyft handle it at effective January 1st. I don't think we're going to see anything happening, uh, but we are seeing this happening, and this is fantastic news. So 
Uh, all drivers should be really happy with this development, whether you were for AB5 or not. Um, those of you who were for it, take you know take a bow because uh, and you supported AB5 and and uh, encouraged other people to support it because it has definitely paid off some big dividends here, and that all drivers um, now have this uh, increased level of flexibility and, and control over your work schedule. And uh, it'll allow you to make more money in less time. There's no doubt that this is a super valuable tool. It's a reason people like me and uh, lots of drivers have been asking for this and wanting for this and not understanding why, really, we didn't have this. I just thought it always made sense. Why make us take rides we don't want to take? Why not let drivers choose who they take and enjoy that experience with the passenger rather than forcing us? And in that forcing of us, that's the argument that AB5 is making, that we don't have enough control and therefore we are employees. So good on Uber and good on drivers, because now we have this uh, wonderful new feature. All right. So that's uh, that was one article I wrote. Uber finally lets drivers see where passengers are going. The second big development that occurred is uh, Uber releases two-year safety report. How bad is it really? All right, so this is another article I wrote in the last week. So Uber, for the last two years, has been keeping track of how many people have reported uh, being assaulted, okay? And it turns out the number is around 3,000 per year. So if we look at these numbers, uh, that seems like a big number, doesn't it? 3,000 people have been assaulted per year. Uh, within uh, Uber Uber cars, right? So uh, the, here, here are some numbers for you. So as of today, Uber does approximately 4 million trips per day, okay? Uh, throughout the, the previous two years, 2017 and 2018, there was an average of 3 million trips per, per, uh, per day. So that number has gone up significantly. So Uber is continuing to grow. Now, out of the percentage of people that are assaulted in an Uber car is 0. 0.000003. Okay? Or you could say at 0.0003%. But if you take away the percent, then it's 0. 0.000003. And basically what that converts to is approximately nine serious safety incidents per day. So out of 3 million trips, nine, uh, nine uh, serious safety incidents per day. Now, of course, we want that number to be zero, right? But given the, the, the vast number of trips and the percentage is 0.000003, that seems to me like a pretty, pretty, pretty good, do you know? It's not, not terrible. Um, that's my feeling. I don't know how you feel about it, but uh, given it's such a minuscule uh, percentage, I think uh, I think we're doing okay. The thing I pointed out here is that um, one part of the report indicated that fifty six percent of the sexual assaults were from um, or passengers, while forty four percent were of drivers. So it's about close to fifty fifty. And almost all the articles I read really emphasize that passengers are getting, you know, assaulted by, by drivers. And what we find out is that that's true. Yes, the pass drivers do assault passengers, but 44% of the time it's passengers assaulting the drivers. Now, um, by the time this comes out, you will have heard my podcast interview with Angela uh, a, a driver, a new driver, who had a horrible experience uh, uh, picking up a male passenger who had been drinking, and he was throwing up in the back of her car, and uh, he made he made a grab at her, and she punched him and got away. Things like this happen a lot, right? So we're seeing that forty four percent of these assaults are passengers assaulting drivers, but that doesn't get much media play. Uh, the bigger media story seems to be that, you know, 
drivers are the pervs and we're all over the passengers. And that's bullshit. That's not true. And now we've got some statistics to prove that. Um, in fact, Reuters, the news service, was uh, wanted to contact uh, Angela to, uh, to interview her. And they're interviewing other female drivers about their experiences. Because when I'm in a car as a passenger and I have a female driver, I always ask, you know, I let them know that I'm a writer and, you know, have they ever had any issues? Every, dri every female driver has had an issue with a man in the car um, where they were, you know, hit on, grabbed at, uh, or in the case of Angela, you know, really grabbed at. Um, so it just goes to show you that it's all perception. But in reality, it's about 50-50. Half the time, the drivers are assaulting the passengers, and half the time, the passengers are assaulting the drivers and mostly the women drivers. So what can you do? What can you do to protect yourself? Well, I recommend it strongly that you get a dash cam if you don't have one already. Because by having a dash cam, whoever's in your car sort of knows Big Brother's watching, right? They're, they're going to be on their best behavior because they know if they do something, it's on tape, right? It's going to be, uh, it's in a, it's, uh, there's going to be proof that you're an asshole, so you better be good, right? So if you're a sp specifically a woman, uh, get a dash cam. And if you're a guy, get a dash cam. But particularly if you're a woman, have that level of protection uh, so that uh, your, your creepy male passenger who's had too much to drink and uh, thinks he's in in in, um, in uh, title to you uh, knows that he can't uh, can't take any action uh, because if he does he's going to be in some big trouble because it's all going to be recorded and you'll have proof of what happened. There'll be no denying it, right? Okay. So that was the report. Um, if you're interested in getting a dash cam, the one we recommended was Van True. V-A-N-T-R-U-E, Vantru N2 Pro High-End Dash Cam, uh, which you can get on Amazon for approximately $200. And uh, if you go to the article, there's a link to that as well. So Uber, some big news. I got to say that um, I'm surprised at how kind of good the news is from Uber. Uh, the, the new features, fantastic. Jay gives it, you know, two thumbs up. And the safety report, right? So... There's a, you know, there's perception and reality, and this gives us some reality. These, this, this report, the safety report, gives us some real numbers, so we can see how how good or how bad things really are, not what we think, not the perception, and the perception that drivers are all uh, assaulting passengers is not accurate. We now know that for sure. We have numbers to back that up. It's approximately fifty fifty. So, uh, drivers unite. You know, take care of yourself. Be safe. Um, like, I, like I said, for me, I feel the most vulnerable as a driver when somebody sits directly behind me because when they're directly behind me, I can't see them. Now, I've never had an issue. You know, I'm a six foot four guy. I'm in good shape. No one's really going to mess with me. Um, but I still worry, you know, someone is behind me. What if they're mentally unstable, Right. Passengers don't get screened. Um, I think about that. But as I said, nothing nothing bad has happened. And fortunately, most people don't sit directly behind me. They usually sit, you know, on the right side of the car in the in the in the back seat, or a few will sit, you know, in the in the driver's seat, in the uh, passenger's seat, in the front seat. But um, you know, it's what we do. It's how we make our money. And uh, as this report shows, the great majority of passengers are awesome, friendly, you know, cordial, generous, uh, magnanimous of spirit. Uh, there's just a few that uh, are the bad apples. And this report shows us that there aren't too, too many of those. All right. So that's it for today. Stay dry out there. Y'all have a great day. Be safe. Be safe. I love drivers. You guys are awesome. Keep working on your plan B. Make your dreams a reality. You go do it.
If you're thinking about starting an online business, definitely check out my website at nomadj.com where you can get my free ebook called What's Next? How to Do Online Work You Love from Anywhere in the World. That is nomadjay.com. I also do a daily one minute per day podcast called Nomad Daily in which I share different aspects of life. Uh, Nomad Daily with Jay Creator is available wherever you get your podcasts. People are really liking it. Check it out. You just uh, subscribe, and then every day you're just gonna it's gonna automatically load up, and you're gonna get the next episode, and you just listen for a minute to a minute and a half, and boom, you're done. And uh, it's great. I really enjoy doing that. All right, next episode, more news, interviews, all things rideshare dojo for drivers and all of us in the gig economy. I will do my best to bring you the best here in the dojo. This is Jay Crater saying thanks for entering the dojo every Monday and Thursday. Drive happy and be safe out there. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening and be safe out there.